All right, hello there. Good morning, everyone. Paul Tranny here. I'm gonna dive into today's masterclass. Hello, Carol and Steve and Andreas, Jose, Mia. Awesome. Good to have you here. So uh, yeah, feel free to say hello. Tell me where you're from. Um, this is some heavy compositing, right? Obviously, like when you see anything sort of steampunk related, I could do a search on it so we all know what we're talking about. It gets pretty intense in terms of composition, but that's why I think it'll be fun. So hopefully you think so as well, Ashant and Cornell and everyone. Fantastic. And if you're joining me from elsewhere, I want to say hello to you as well, but jump over to Behance.net forward slash Adobe Live. Cool. All right, Sarah. Hello. Awesome. Bring that back up. There we go. Uh, let me go ahead and kind of switch screens and I can just do a quick search for this sort of thing. Steampunk. Let's search on it. Let's get this party started. Hopefully everybody enjoyed uh, Voodoo Val's daily creative challenge. That was like a lot of fun. I had no idea what she was talking about with the the uh the the cartoon or anime thing that she was working on or whatever i had no idea anyways i'm not a huge fan i mean you're never gonna see me dressed up like this but uh that's awesome honestly what people think of i'm thinking about just basically um sort of mechanical uh like machines that are actually organic we're gonna turn them into a machine so that is the plan i thought that would be pretty fun uh to do something like that it's kind of along the lines of this without going through all that work of actually creating this item. But I love the gears. Um, I love these. Um, we could use some smoke stacks. So it's going to be he heavy compositing. Uh, yeah, uh, do I have a Mac, Mac OS notebook? You mean a laptop? Yes, I do have a laptop. <laughs> it's just a uh, MacBook Pro is the short of it. So let's get some gears. Let's see where we're at. Here we are in Photoshop. Just checking everything. Uh, fantastic. Uh, all right, so steampunk is the topic, as I mentioned. Here's just some text. So a lot of times it is kind of turning something into metal. In fact, let me just darken this up a little bit. Uh, let's take the brightness down just because it's kind of hard to see this text right here. And from here, we could take this text and uh, just do some quick metallic looks just to kind of get warmed up. All right. Let's get warmed up, huh? First off, here's my text right over here. Yeah, we need to um, pick a better font for one. Shall we? Okay, right in here, clicking like so. Uh, in fact, I can kind of sort through some of these. I might wanna do a slab serif for steampunk, uh, just to be honest with you. I don't know why it's not giving me a ton of options, but we could always jump out to uh, good old fonts.adobe.com and pick some new ones. All right. Mike Brown from Alabama. Good to see you, my friend. Awesome. Okay, so here we are. Um, obviously, a number of tags, and these are new, by the way, which I like. You can go in and just kind of based on you know, maybe you don't know what slab serif, sans serif, and all that fun stuff is. I'm sure you actually do, but right in here, I can jump in and say, hey, you know what? Give me sort of rough tags, anything tagged with rough, and we can see it right in here. Like Milka, this is pretty awesome. Yeah, I want to favorite that. Let's view that family, shall we? Let's activate these seven fonts, because I'm really into it. Milka, that's what we'll use, okay? Uh, let me know if you have questions, Hamza. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna be pretty fun. I already have some stuff already made, so I'm excited to share this with you. Okay, so you just gotta bear with me. Uh, but right in here, Milka, let's do a search. By the way, if you ever search on something and it's a font that you've already downloaded, change it back to all classes, because sometimes you'll start typing in something and it won't be there. So Milka, there it is, Milka regular. Bam, there we are steampunk as you can see like so okay pretty straight forward Ooh, good steampunk movie league of extraordinary gentlemen uh, into it right so we jump in here we can make this like a different color as we can see and uh a lot of people will double click and add adjustment layers or excuse me layer styles 
But uh, honestly, I don't really want to do a lot of this, right? This is only going to get me like so far. In fact, the color's off. I'm actually, I might keep it. Let's do this really fast. Come out here. We'll go into hue and saturation. Well, I usually make everything gray and then we'll add that brown tint because it's where definitely brown lives on when it comes to steampunk. But let's jump in here. Uh, gradient overlay, there we have it. We can add our drop shadow like so. You can see I've definitely played with this like a little much as part of an earlier stream I did earlier this week. So let's change that like so. And bevel and emboss, right? So this is what people will typically do. We know from this being a master class, we're gonna go beyond a simple bevel and emboss, right? Uh, if you wanna make it kind of more interesting when you add this bevel and emboss, go into these contours, right? And you'll get some more interesting sort of levels uh, when it comes to um, sort of, uh, let's go back in here to this one. Let's do a new contour, right? Right in here, we'll create this new contour. And there we go, there we go. We can go ahead and bend and distort this. Keep this in mind because this is going to make some of the lights really light and some of the darks really dark, and it's going to reverse some of those, which is why I'm doing this sort of contour like so, okay? So that's all I'm doing. Click OK, right? A lot of times, uh, yes, uh, Mia, it's begging for a rust texture. It's begging for a thousand things. It actually isn't even like working out too. The only thing I like about it is that texture. But uh, trust me when I say you could try to sort of fabricate things in Photoshop when really what you want to do is actually use actual photos, okay? I think it's like Terry White said earlier this morning in his masterclass, you need to do everything in camera that you can if possible, right? And then you use Photoshop if you need to for those missing little bits and pieces. So that's what I would do here. And I'd actually take this metal texture, duplicate it, jump it, bam, right? Bring it up to the top, bam, put it inside of there, inside of that steampunk, right? It's actually inside of there right now. We can keep the bevel. Um, we can keep uh, the drop shadow as well, but this is what I want to use is this actual texture right in here. Let's do some more fun things, shall we? Let's add some rivets to it as well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a whole complex illustration, by the way, super soon. Uh, but let's grab this really fast. Let's get this party started, guys, huh? Let's add some like rivets to it, shall we? Like this, perfect, right? Uh, bam, 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 like that. Here's our lovely rivet. right, that we can go ahead and take and start using, right? So there's a couple different ways I could do this. I can actually turn this into a brush and make this a little bit more efficient for me if I want to. Uh, but I'm just gonna grab this element, copy it, paste it. There it is, Command Zero. Let's zoom back out. Shift the colors a little bit, because actually it has some brown to it. And then let's go ahead and make this much smaller, like so. Okay, kind of looks like a little sphere right now. Not to worry. Um, I would place these all over the place, right? But we also want to blend them in as well. So, so let's check this out. Uh, this is a shortcut key. I don't know if many of you do it, but hopefully you do. Um, if I do an option and drag, I can go ahead and duplicate that little rivet like so. So uh, I'm gonna work on the coloring in a little bit. Just wanted to show you option drag, boom, there it is. Dragging that around, option drag, holding down the shift key. We can constrain it like so and add just some little divots and some fun things to this as I work on it, right? Just some fun little divots. Let's put that right in the center, why not? Taking all these shapes, let's group them, command G, and here's all of our rivets. Was I just calling them divots? Paul the Riveter, ha ha. Good stuff, good stuff. Right, there we are. Let's 
sometimes play with the blend modes if I want to kind of blend it in a little better, right? And already by changing it to a uh, darker color, it blends it in a little bit more. You guys get the idea. All right. For any help pattern vest sites, Renock, I don't know exactly what you're saying there, but I assume you mean places where you can get patterns. Um, uh, I don't really, I mean, I'll use stock.adobe.com and then I'll use, um, so stock.adobe.com and then I'll use like brush easy for brushes. Okay. Let's take a look at that. Let me actually grab something. Ooh, a chain. Okay, are you ready to get your mind blown? Let's get our mind blown right now. Okay, so I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna rasterize this layer. I'm just gonna take a piece of this, right? This little piece of this chain that I wanna actually like duplicate forever. Let's grab this chain. I'm just using a mouse. Let's copy it, paste it. That's the only piece that I wanted. Just this little piece. Oh, look, steady, steady. Just using the lasso tool. Now let's do this. You ready for this? Let's take this. I'm so excited to show this, by the way. Check this out. We're going to take this, and rather than me duplicating it everywhere, like I did with the little rivets, right? Because that's going to take forever. Uh, what if I could do something a little more creative with this? So let's just try this out. I'm gonna take uh, this item and I'm gonna turn it into a, you guessed it, a brush. Turning it into a brush uh, preset, we'll just call it sampled brush, right? And there it is. Let's turn that off, let's go over here and let's just see what this looks like as I just change this real fast. Here's our brush, look at that, cool, okay? The bummer thing is, it's not really connected at all, right? That's like not very cool. I'll go into brush settings, okay? And I wanna do a couple things. Are you ready for this, Mallory? And Mike and Steve. Hey, Jeff, what's up? Uh, got the fonts from Adobe Fonts. So let's go in here. Um, the size is actually pretty good, but right down here, we want to do two things. You ready to connect this? I'm gonna go down here to the spacing for this brush, right? And we'll grab this and we'll stretch it out. Sure enough, we wanna space it out. Can you see that? To where it's gonna link up. Okay, so we've spaced it out 174%. All just depends on your selection, okay? We're just gonna try this out. I'm actually not 100% sure it's gonna work because this might need to be 100% opaque. Nonetheless, let's space it out. Let's go into shape dynamics. Let's change the control and we'll change this to direction. So based on the direction I pull, I wanna go ahead and add that chain. So now when I pull that down and you can see it's not completely lined up, but it's doing what we want it to, okay? So let's go back in here to the spacing now that we have it the right direction. Let's tighten that up so those two holes are aligned. Bam, got it, right? And now we can go in and uh, add and create this lovely chain. Does everybody see that? Does everybody like that? All right, now you guys get the idea and I can really be more efficient with my design. Going back in here for this, um, maybe changing the color but you know, this is where I can start to add this. I knew this was gonna happen, by the way, because I, I knew this needed to be like, this is actually kind of like a semi-transparent. But again, it is working and doing what I want it to as I start to do a steam, steam, M, punk, you get the idea. Cool. Uh, yes, yeah, super fun to work with. Hello, Lucas from Poland. It's good to have you here. Sai as well, good to see you. Cool, so this is super fun to work with. 
Um, yeah, so if you guys like that. I would tweak that some more, just so you know, because it needs to be all black. That's why whenever you make these, um, hold on to that initial little piece, right? You want to keep this. And by the way, let me just go back in here. Let's delete that. So I'm not 100% done, right? Here's my here's my chain. I've alternated these, or excuse me, alternate. What's the word? I adjusted. <laughs> so we're gonna do a new brush preset. And now here I have right in here, capture the brush size, include tool settings. I would say chain, chain link. So don't forget to capture all of those modified settings because what I had before right in here was this. And here's my new chain link with the saved preset and you can see the difference. Cool. Cool. Uh, back in here, of course, what I would do is change this and make this much more bold. Levels. Oops. Make sure you're not on that. Let's go in here. Make it much darker, like so. Like that. And here could be my new version. And again, you're going to have to make it each time, but you get the idea. Uh, here you were trying to skew and distort chain and I actually putting on a perfume. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. So Michelle, another thing you can think about, because we're making this, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm also going to jump into other tools because I would love to say that Photoshop is always the answer, but um, sometimes it's not. Let's be honest. Okay. So let's kind of jump into this. Let's have fun with this project. Bear with me. Bring this into view. There it is. Let's take all this stuff, group it together. And this is what we're gonna work on. Let's take this and we're going to, um, Yeah, feel free to repeat any questions that you might have. So we're gonna, I love the idea of taking an organic object and then turning it into like all metal, for instance. So let's try that right now. We're gonna take this awesome eagle. We're gonna go up, actually this is what I'm gonna do. This is the easiest way to do it. Here's my eagle layer right over here. We'll just do a straight up remove background. Okay, so it's gonna remove that background. Bam, select remove background, it removes that background, no hands mode, okay? We did it. I could go in and clean this up. This needs some cleaning that needs to be done, right? So we'll just double click on that. Make sure our brush is selected. Oops, hold down the Alt key, grab some of this. Really, whatever you wanna do, folks. But this is where I would clean this up. Make sure I get those nice crisp edges. Remember, you're removing from the selection. You're removing the red, which is why I'm holding down the Alt key or Option key to kind of get rid of that, like so. Cool. It's not rocket surgery. It's fine. Okay. Some spots up here I can come in and try out. Uh, I'd probably different, use different brushes. I wouldn't use Refine Edge. It just kind of depends. Right down here, I'd maybe use a refine edge for some of these parts. But in the end, since this is steampunk, I'm gonna wanna have those crisp edges, right? So I'll just use my brush, come up here. It's like, yeah, I need a little bit more right up here. Zhoop. Give me that highlight, Zhoop. like so. Pick up some of these parts, you get the idea. We'll just click okay, because we wanna make this metal, okay? Let's make it metal. All right, so here we have our lovely eagle, which I'll turn into a smart object. Right, and what I'll do is I will uh, get rid of all the color. So hue and saturation down to zero, right? And now I can go in and try to make this look like chrome a couple different ways. Is uh, a lot of people actually, which works great, is using levels. So we'll get in here, we'll go in here and use levels. All right.
is there a playlist of all the master classes? I wish, that would be a good idea. But happens on Fridays and uh, yeah, so that's probably something we need to do. All right, here's our lovely eagle. Here's our curves, right? We can give it more, uh, oops, let's zoom back out. Let's take that and clip it. So we're creating a clipping mask. So it's just affecting uh, that one layer, right? We can see it change, right? We can make the darks darker. We can make the lights lighter. It gets more interesting when we start to do a fun little zigzag. So we'll go up and down and up and down, right? And up and start to make this look a little more metallic. Anytime we dip down past this line, it's just gonna get, it's gonna make it look more metallic. Some parts will uh, look better than others, to be honest with you. All right, right in here, for instance. There we go, see? Let's get rid of that a little bit. And it looks really cool like right here. So this will get us like part of the way there. Let me just tweak this. This is almost like my base coat, right? Just dropping in a base coat for this metallicness, if you will. I will play with this all day long. <laughs> I will. Right here, it looks super cool, okay? But this is, again, just our base coat, if you will, okay? Drop that right up there. And um, let's just uh, change the background. Boom, boom, boom. Put that up to the top. There we go. Putting this on a different background, right? That's what we need. Kind of like this. All right, so we made this look somewhat metal, right? Let's go into this. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. It's like, let's not forget about fresco when we talk about brushes. Okay, so this eagle. Let's uh, go into a uh, good old filter gallery, okay? So filter gallery also allows you to create some things that are metallic or chrome-like, okay? So here's where it is originally, okay? Let's dip into some of these really fun uh, folders, specifically Sketch, but I'd peruse all of these because there's a couple that we could use. But right in here, there is something actually called Chrome. So that's what we'll check out. Selecting Chrome, you can see what it does. Actually, it does make it look like Chrome to a degree. Okay, we could smooth it out. We can add more or less detail. It just depends on the photo. I'm gonna actually take the detail down, but that gives me a lot of that smoothness. Also, keep in mind, you can actually stack these um, various filter effects. So I'll try out Chrome. Another one I will work with is I'll use plastic wrap right up here. Uh, would it look weird if you reduce the details first so it looks smoother? Ah, Mia, that's exactly what I do, which is exactly why I made it a smart object. So good call. Uh, so here, let's jump in here. Let's show you plastic wrap. So look, plastic wrap actually might give us some of those highlights that we need, which is awesome. Okay, I could also, like I said, I could stack them. I could stack chrome and plastic wrap together to make pure chaos. Right now I'm thinking plastic wrap looks great. Click okay. Right, there it is, stacked on top of those other filters. Okay. Uh, the coffee of the today is like a Kauai um, vanilla hazelnut with these little compostable uh, K-cups, which I'm totally into. All right, so that is the coffee of the day. What is everybody else drinking? Huh? I also got a, 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 a sparkling water here. Um, orange vanilla. It's, it's basically a vanilla, it's, or excuse me, it's like an orange creamsicle. All right, so let's do this. Let's uh, apply layer mask. B for brush, actually no, that's not what I wanna do. I wanna come in here and I'd smooth this out. You could blur it all, but we wanna keep these hard edges. So it means coming in here, and what I would actually use is I would use um, a smudge tool. Come in and start to smudge this, right? So you have smudge and then you also have blur, okay? I, I personally, you, you know, like smudge because you still get that variation in color. And that's what I'd need to do in this case, right? Smooth out some of these parts, but especially all this chaos right here, oh, that needs so much work. So let's not lose all the detail. 
but let's just push that down like so, okay? That's all we're doing. We're using the smudge tool to kind of even it out and feel free if you want to use the blur tool, go up to the top, make sure strength might be set to 100. I feel like I have to scrub on this like so much and I guess I'm just a little impatient, which is why I end up with the smudge tool. Let's come in here, grab that, smudge, smudge ruski. Do that stuff, get it a little smoother, right? And not only that, we can add some highlights and some dark colors if we want to as well. Okay, so there's that hue. Let's get rid of that color altogether. Lock down the transparency, smooth that out like so. Another adjustment, or another layer, B for brush. Right click, reset that tool, crank up the size, flip the color. Come on, buddy. There we go. So right in here, I can add some highlights if I want to. So we have that. Mia, thank you for mentioning that as well. We'll close that, right? It's a smart object. It'll get applied to this. And now we can see this is much more like a crossbar, which is cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you could use Camera Raw. Um, yeah, that might work. I guess, you know, you're probably gonna want a level of control that nothing sort of automatic will really give you. Um, so that's why I ended up using, just like kind of doing it myself. Okay, so let's fast forward, shall we? Because what's our next step is to cut out all this stuff, right? I would, I would have a litany of parts that I would use and textures that I would start dropping in here, okay? Such as, just do this. Let's drop this in, don't freak out. Grab that, delete it, delete it. Chop off this handle. Because now, here's the painstaking part of grabbing all this content, excuse me, using these different elements and uh, replacing whatever organic material is with something that would be interpreted as metal. So it gets to be really fun, to be honest with you. Like here's, that's where we'll put this big knife, right? Let's undo that. I'm gonna turn that into a smart object first, and now I'm gonna rotate it and put it right here and use puppet warp. Bam, bam, curve it out like so. Big blade. Uh, Command J to jump it. Command J to jump again. Move this into place like so to get all these different parts. And again, since I used, uh, oops, I do that a couple times. There we go. Since I converted this to a smart object, it saves that uh, that puppet warp, so I can go back in and edit that puppet warp that I did uh, to be this new angle. Uh, now that's a knife. Hey, what's up, Robzilla? Good to see you, buddy. So that's what I'm doing here. Let me fast forward, because this is, I've covered the basics, right? Um, <laughs> the deadliest human, the deadliest eagle ever made. All right. You get how this works, right? Copying and pasting for each one of those. I'm going to jump ahead, by the way if I dare, and uh, just kind of show you uh, what I already have put together right in here. So I'm fast forwarding some because I've already done a lot of this work and we'll continue to do some more of this work. But right in here, here's, here's a version again that I was working on earlier. What do we have in here? We have a couple, a, a ton of layers. This is so much going on. Uh, this is so much. Right in here, I should probably um, change this a little bit. But here's all those knives for the wings. 
And there's even some other blades that I have in there that I was working with as well. Um, which I might not need, to be honest with you. Like, I have those blades. Okay, I think whenever I'm making something uh, and it's like, I really want everything to be gray and then I'll add color later on. Um, that's when I would probably just take this curve. Well, actually, probably not even the curves. I would take... Um, I would remove the color from pretty much everything so I could add it later on. So here I have this eagle layer. That's going to contain everything. Right? And then I could just jump in and add, say for instance, uh, human, human saturation. I could take that saturation all the way down. Or what I could do is I could add a black and white, right? We'll clip it just to right there. And now we have everything as black and white, right? Ultimately, I want everything to have this like less chrome and more like rusted metal look will be kind of nice, okay? But let's just add some more to this, shall we? We need to put some rivets, some, some rivets in here. Maybe some gears, some gears would be fun, huh? Let's just have some fun today, everyone, shall we? Let's have some fun. I'm just blowing away folders. I'm deleting stuff. I'm grabbing this gear. Yeah, this is just a bike gear. <laughs> Why not? It's a little too clean, right? But this is what I've ended up with. Cause I'm like, okay, I gotta make 50 zillion things. Let's just go ahead and uh, use some of these gears. Uh, what else? I have these clockwork parts, right? These are gonna be really fun to use. Oh yeah, these clockwork parts are gonna be great. Okay. Ooh, I love this one too, right here. Let's grab this one. Rasterize, that's right, I rasterized that layer. All right, let's take this one, let's turn on that eagle. Bop. And then we can just drop these right in here like we were doing before, okay? So drop that right there for each one of these. So let's group it. Command G, we'll call this uh, gear for uh, feathers. Yeah, that's right, it's a lot of work. Zoop, zoop. Just duplicating. Let's hook that together, right not, right, why not? Move that down, holding down the Alt key or Option key if you uh, are on a Mac. We can maybe put some of those in there, I don't know. I don't know if that's working like 100%, but hey, it's a it's a thought. Okay. Gear for feathers. Ah. Uh, well, actually this is what I want to do, Michelle, just so you know. I will actually want to um Yeah, I guess you know what it, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of um Clash of the Titans. What's the name of that owl in Clash of the Titans? That's actually a great little resource. So let me just do a search on that really fast. Uh, what's the name of that? Titans Metal Owl. Uh, I don't even know how to spell owl. I apologize. What's that little guy called? Oh, Bulbo. Oh, Bubo. Bubo. His name is Bubo. <laughs> Help me. But this is adorable. This is what we're going for, right? How awesome is that? Right, so um, I'm really into this. I love this like, uh, like sort of chain metal action going on. This is really cool as well, right? And that can be, again, just our reference image. There it is. Okay. We're doing uh, a Bubo-esque type of steampunk magical creature. All right. Awesome. Jason agrees. Checking the time. I have about uh, 20 minutes. And uh, then we have a video and audio masterclass. How to use reverb. Hopefully Jason tells us what reverb is. I have no idea. I'm sure it's something cool. Uh, yes, exactly, Fury, uh, add a drop shadow. So that's a great call. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna do that 
I might do that right now, cause let's do that right now. Boom, smart object. Hold on, rivet. Uh, uh, this is actually a gear. We'll just say gear and make it a smart object. And now I'm gonna start duplicating it. Then I can change the size and add a shadow, right? This just needs some work. I need to use that chain that I worked on earlier. There we go. Welcome to the, the Photoshop file with a thousand parts in it. It's gonna have easily a thousand. So I could double click on this gear, uh, jump in here, maybe make this a touch smaller. Holding down the option key and just add a drop shadow. Let's make it real subtle. Make it real subtle. Okay, good, that's good. Done, done, all right. Eh, it's a little intense. It's okay. Uh, let's take some of these other parts. Now, this is what you're gonna feel the need to do, is you are going to want to probably, uh, you know, use, I have this piece of metal, which is kind of nice. Um, I have this, this uh, broiler plate type look, which might work. I have, uh, fish scales, right? This is from a silver fish that we can also, uh, we could uh, take this and manipulate it into place as well. So let's just try that. Let's try this one, these scales, okay? So it's already a smart object. Um, what I will sometimes do is, because I want to actually break it from that, uh, this, the uh, library item, so I made it a new uh, smart object. But let's just jump in here and let's uh, let's warp it. Let's try this on for size, folks. Zoop, zoop. Because it is like our little character right over here, Bubo. We're just gonna warp this into place. Just like that. Bring that down. Uh, ooh, fish leather. Oh, wait, look up fish leather? I don't know. What is fish leather? That's not like, um, that's not like, fish beef jerky, is it? Because that's what it sounds like. All right, there we go. Something like that, that may or may not work. Chain mail would work. So this is where I jump in and uh, find that elsewhere chain mail this is what this is actually what I'm gonna do we'll do a search for this just for fun since Steve mentioned it chain mail might work um, yeah this sort of chain mail looks good this this is cool this is what we need this type of chain mail ah love it just license it. Let's do it. It is so nice. I have to admit, so nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is this is gorgeous. Um, chances are this is actually a 3D rendering. Iron, sh I s oh yeah, so it's, it is a 3D file. Okay, and I'm glad this came up. Scale mail, is that what it's called? Fascinating. Let's convert that to a smart object. Do the same process, scale it down first. 
move it into place. And let's have some fun. Shift option, stretch. There we go. Save, close. There we go. Manipulate this into place. Let's warp it. We're back in it to win it. So let's get this into place. So, um,. All right, just kind of checking in. Fish jerky just sounds disgusting, if you ask me. Uh, anyways, let's do this. Um, so I'm surprised somebody hasn't mentioned like Adobe Dimension, because we could potentially try to um, use Dimension, do some renderings that are in the angles that we need them in, rather than trying to manipulate this into place, right? So there's two different ways of doing this, right? And guess what? I'm gonna try both because I can. Okay, so let's bring this up. Bring this over. There we go. All right. to be a lot darker right over here and a number of shading options need to go on so that's not bad okay uh, huh. cool uh, yeah so that is that is working I love the tint of this this looks so good absolutely love it right that looks so good there's so many parts we need to work in here like so many right so again, going back to a number of these items that we need to take a look at. Even for the legs, right? The legs, we want them to be different. Uh, I might need some uh, parts over here as well. I already have some, by the way. So here's a piece. This is pretty cool. This needs a drop shadow, because you can't even see it. Add that drop shadow just to offset it, and now that looks much better. So there we go. We we'll kind of have that dropping down. So much work needs to happen. I have these bunch of gears that could potentially work as well. Let's make that a smart object before we start rotating it and manipulating it into place. We can go with something kind of like this. And again, we can warp it. So this is what I'm doing here. You ready for this? Uh, actually, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go Command T, hold down the Command key. When you hold down the Command key, when you do a transform, you're able to uh, manipulate each one of these pieces. So I've manipulated that and adjusted it into place like so. Uh, one way of giving it some depth is duplicating it, having another piece like so. That's all I'm doing right now. I'm trying to give it some depth, right? Can you see that? Just barely giving it some depth which I would have to do this a thousand times. Who's done this before, by the way? Right, you've duplicated an item and then you start offsetting it and you know maybe you scaled it in some way and you start offsetting it. That's literally all I did right here. Let's rest or uh, merge these layers together. There we go, so that's that gives me like a little bit of depth, okay? That's okay. That is okay. Let's get rid of that. Another option. Oh, I only have 10 minutes. Uh, 
Oh, we need hook claws. Ah, oh, I love it. Gear, I was thinking gear eyes, but it, it needs to, I want, I want something in a glass bulb. Uh, again, just kind of going back to our reference right here. Oh, that's so hard to see. Let's just take a look. Okay, okay. I want to do like, I want to do more like a glass bulb type thing is what I'm thinking. Anyways, let's let's continue down this road. Uh, right over here, I could switch to Dimension, by the way. Here in Dimension, I actually just created this file. Okay, creating this file, you can drop, you can make a cone, you can use metal on this cone. Uh, you can give it a, a little bit of depth by using, um, or manipulating the metal. Okay, so I'm in Adobe Dimension. I can, I could potentially make the claws in here. Oh, let's do that. Maybe we should, let me think about this. All right, let's try this. Starter assets, because what we have in Adobe Dimension is this torus. So these are new uh, basic shapes that you can modify. So uh, let's just turn off that cone. Let's take this torus, let's drop it in here. Here's that lovely torus. Let's give it some metal. There we are, looks great, okay? But since this is um, a primitive that I can actually modify, so, right down here we can slice it right so in here let's just take a chunk out take that angle right so this is what we can do we can make this uh you know what is it what maybe 180 right make that 180 and then combine that with our cone right so here's my cone i'd probably just add an entirely new cone by the way let's just do that Starter assets, there's my cone, dropping it right in here. The reason I added it again is because it just kind of, I wanted to kind of reset it to the, to just the zero, zero point. All right, so here's the cone. Uh, let's rotate it, we can rotate on the X, the Y, and the Z, right? Let's make it uh, 90. Okay. Whoop. By the way, notice how I'm rotating this. Uh, it gives me those degrees, but I'm also watching the numbers off to the side in the properties panel. So even though you don't know what the X, Y, and Z is, just watch what numbers change and I can make this 180 like so, okay? So that's in place, right? We could scale it down. You get the idea. You guys get it. 180, let's try to get this done as fast as possible. Shrink it down, move it over, right? Move that over here. Notice how I'm seeing the ground. We can go in here and you know what? Just turn off the ground plane. Bam, I don't need that ground plane. I can move this into place, zoom in on it, like so. Okay, so that's all I'm doing. You get the idea. Let's make this the same size. Ah, oh, this is taking, it's taking a little bit of time. Scaling it out, there's our claw. Oh yeah. Right. Size 24 centimeters by four by 12. How's everybody doing this fine day? It is Friday. You guys excited? Take this, move it to the ground, boom. Scale it down some more.
Oh. There we go. All right. Oh, uh, it was pretty good to begin with. It should actually be four centimeters, right? That should be the size, because I'm comparing the two sizes, the size of these two. Let's lock this down. Let's change this to four. Yeah, there we go. It works, fine. Move it to the bottom. And press it right up in there. Uh, and get this just right. Okay, cool. Good enough. We have our spike, whatever. Uh, rotate this into place, right? I can always clean that up later on. You guys get the idea, because I only have five minutes. And all I wanted to do is just kind of give you a primer into good old dimension, right? Just so you can see how it works and all that good stuff. Okay. There's our spike. I can duplicate this a number of times. to make all of the different spikes. Um, I don't know why I'm, I'm kind of stuck right here. So let's just take these two. Uh, and let's just rotate them up and call it a day. There we are, spikes, claws, Scary grabber things is what we'll call it. But there we have those. We could duplicate them, right? Here's our other set. Rotating that around. We'll render that out if we want to as well. The different angle, right? Saving this, rendering it to our desktop. Done for that. Whew, sorry about that. You glad to see I'm struggling? I'm always struggling, Sig. I'm struggling. All right, so here's another option. Using Illustrator. Look, I'm adding this. I get it, this is a Photoshop masterclass. But also in Illustrator, you can make 3D items to get something to be the exact angle that you want it at. So um, let's just take Let's just do a search. I think I have some gears. Here they are. Let's do this really fast. Let's grab, uh, I don't know, uh, this one right here. Copy it. You can see I already have this one made, but just to show you, you can take anything, drop it in, change the color. We'll just go with a gray and then use 3D extrude and bevel. And this time again, I am in Illustrator. So now I can go ahead and uh, not only create this with the uh, depth that I want, this perspective and all that stuff, but I can start mapping art to it. So right in here, that's where I'll just map some metal to it, which is all I'm doing right now. Okay, does that make sense? Mapping this to all the different sides in Illustrator. Okay, you get the idea. Let's take this down to 20, boom, click OK. I could have a number of these that I can use in um, my file, right? So here I have this version, right? Check it out. There it is. Let's go ahead and adjust it because I might want it to be under the wing. Let's take this down to 22 or as well. And then we'll come in here and we'll say, hey, you know, what? we want this to be like under the wing, like right over here. I can roughly kind of get that into place like so if I want to. Click OK, there it is. Copy, paste as a smart object because I'll probably change it later. All right. Shazad, good to see you. Paula, awesome. Outer glow on the wings. Yeah, I could do that. But again, here's just a gear I could use. Uh, Rob said he wanted maybe some gears for the eyes. We can work on that. But this is nice that uh, I can put this anywhere I want. All right. Ah, oh, man, have a great weekend, Cornell. Awesome. 
A uh, couple more things, even with these blades, I would, I would take all these right over here and duplicate them. But I'm actually down on my last minute, so just keep an eye out for uh, what I end up making. I'll post it to social media. Uh, I knew this was gonna take a while, but hopefully you learned a lot. Honestly, sometimes there's no shortcut to the hard work that you have to put into your designs sometimes. And uh, here's to the hope that it will pay off. Just watch for it in uh, good old um, on Instagram and I'll share it with you there. So thanks so much for watching my steampunk eagle that's slowly coming to life. And I wish you a wonderful weekend. Stick around for Jason. He's going to be doing masterclass, an audio masterclass on how to use reverbs. That will be really fun. Again, thanks for watching. And we'll see you soon. Thanks so much. We'll see you, everybody.